Spiderhead is a state-of-the-art penitentiary experimenting with the effects of research chemicals. The test subjects, technically prisoners of the state, are volunteers for the project aiming to reduce their sentence time. The program is overseen by the sympathetic and hospitable Steve Abenisti, along with his assistant Mark. The prisoners have their own rooms, do chores, and are free to roam about without guard supervision. The subjects go through daily test runs of various drugs, all of which alter their emotions and their perceptions of the surroundings. Inmate Jeff, still reeling from having killed his friend while drunk driving, is given N40, a love drug which distorts his senses and drives him to have sex with two of his fellow inmates. Steve asks him to choose which one of them to give Darken Flocks, a drug that induces intense fear and psychological pain. He declines to choose, claiming he feels nothing in particular for either one of them after the effects of the love drug have worn off. The next day, Steve tells him that the higher ups have chosen that he and the younger of the two women, Heather, must be injected with the dose, although it will only last five minutes. Jeff reluctantly agrees, and to his horror, Heather commits suicide while on the darkened flocks after she damages her Moby Pack, the device that administers the drug. This causes Mark to doubt their work in the facility. As Steve rushes out of the projection room, he drops his keys. Jeff unlocks his desk compartment, discovering that there are no higher-ups. The prison is run by Abinesti. Pharmaceuticals, the drugs, were named from a bingo card. Steve and Jeff get high together on a laughing drug, as Steve also has a mobile pack installed. Steve tells Jeff that his father abandoned him as a child. Jeff confesses to Lizzie, an inmate he is close with, that he not only killed his friend in the car accident, but his girlfriend as well. Lizzie hugs him and they kiss. Steve notices Jeff's feelings for Lizzie. Mark becomes doubtful of Steve's motives, and he breaks down when Jeff confronts him. When Steve asks Jeff to administer Dark and Flux to Lizzie, Jeff takes control of Steve's Moby Pack and forces him to admit the true goal of the program is to test compliance drug B6. The other drugs are merely side projects being used to put B6 to the ultimate test, whether or not they would harm their love when commanded to. The entire time inmates have been consenting to the various tests, they had really been under the influence of the obedience drug. In addition, Steve informs Jeff that he had, in fact, finished his sentence seven months previously while Lizzie's appeal for release had passed the previous week. Jeff forces Steve to open the door of the main entrance to free Lizzie and then tries to order him to hand over the pocket knife. Steve resists and instead takes his phone and enables all four vials of the darkened flocks in Lizzie's mobile pack, causing her to have hysterically behave hysterically and attempt suicide. The two fight for control and Jeff is able to disarm Steve, damaging his mobile pack in the process. Jeff rushes to save Lizzie, he successfully removes the vials of darkened flocks and tells her that he loves her. But Steve gets up and orders the other inmates to apprehend Jeff and Lizzie. They are able to escape from Spiderhead after overpowering some of the other inmates and locking the main door behind them. Mark and the police are now approaching the island as Steve escapes on his float plane but he joyously crashes into a mountain as he is now high on his damaged mobile pack. Meanwhile, Jeff and Lizzie take the remaining motorboat and escape. In a voiceover, Jeff comments that self-forgiveness has to be worked on and chosen rather than easily curable. It's okay. I mean, the premise is okay, I guess. Uh, it's like a it's like a made-for-TV movie. Um, it's that kind of level. But you know they spent a lot of money on it because there's like a bunch of people in it. And I do not buy fucking Chris Hemsworth as a fucking scientist, bro. Like, come on. Like, surfer all day. Thor, yep. Janitor, you know, murderer, military guy, loser, you know, like a uh, bad uncle, you know, like a uh, shifty brother or something, like maybe, but like a fucking scientist. I mean, he might be fucking Mensa for all I know, but he don't look it. He does not look smart. Like he's not, I mean, I can see that he has been working on his acting. Like that is nice work. I mean, I can tell... In this movie, he is trying to create a character, and that character has a bad American accent. And, I mean, come on, dude. Like, I mean, they tried to fix the whole idea of, you know, somebody looking like him, you know? Like, because he's got to work out, like, six hours a day to look like that, okay? Nobody looks like that except for, like, a couple of people who have, like, genetic dispositions. So, yeah, I don't buy him as a fucking scientist at all. The other guy's fine. I buy him as like a scientist. By by Miles Teller more as fucking Elvis. I mean, he looks like he should have played Elvis. Like he's a little bit old, but like, you know, you can fix all that in post. Like you know, his scars and shit. He's got a fucking Elvis. He looks like fucking Elvis. If you put some money on him, he will look like Elvis. DUI junkie, maybe. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I like Miles Teller. He's a good actor. He's done some good work. Funny story. Uh, I was working on this movie, and he was not kidding at all. And he's like, yo, this, this, this extra is trying to offer me cocaine. <laughs> and I guess, like, there's some girl that was working in the background um, that was trying to offer him cocaine, and he was, like, calling her out. I, it's pretty good. Like, it's, it's pretty good. It's just... I just don't buy fucking homie as a scientist. I don't like, like they try to like, you know, cause he's working out like all the time, but like literally no, nobody has that kind of time. No, I just don't buy it. It's not, it's too hard. I mean, yeah, it's just like, I feel like if he wanted to play this role, he should have lost a lot of fucking muscle mass because scientists don't have that kind of time, dude. Like, he's trying to play it off like, yeah, he's, you know, boxing with this scientist and, like, talking about science. But that's not how science works. It involves you sitting someplace and, like, thinking for a long time. Like, you gotta lift and shit. I mean, all you can do is focus on that. Like, you don't, you can't be like, I don't know. It's just too, it's too much. But otherwise, it's okay. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. It's, like, it's on the same level as, like, uh, the old guard. You know, it's like TV movie with like A-list actors. I don't know what's up with that. What are they doing that for? Like, just make a fucking movie. Why are you making it like for TV? Because Netflix is on TVs. I don't know. I don't know. So, I mean, I could tell that Chris has been working. You know, he's obviously trying to have a character. You know, more power to him. Good luck. Good luck with that, buddy. The more you practice, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's all. I guess the set design is great. Um, I love the wooden boats. They must be in, like, Italy or something. Makes me think of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And that big boat getting, like, chopped up in the propeller. But, you know, poor people don't get to travel. All we know is America. That's... And I've been to Canada and Mexico. All we know is this continent. So, I have no idea where they were. Probably Hawaii. Virtual effects, I mean, Miles Teller flying out the car window looked fake as shit. It's pretty good. Like, it's, it's pretty good.